everyone! So as you can see, I have an octopus hat on. Oh, so fun. All right, so today we're gonna to be working on the eyes and the hood of the eyes so that you got these little thingies up here and working on how to attach the lining so you get a nice little curl and how to attach the back of the hat so you get a cute little octopus head going on on the rest of your hat there. So um, today you will be needing your main color. By the way, I ran out of that big old scheme that I had. I ran out before I finished my second hat. So if you're doing two of the same color, make sure you have more than one scheme because you will need it. So we've got our main color today. We have an eye color. The pattern calls for DK yarn. Um, I don't have any of that because it's not one I work with at any point in time, really. So I have worsted weight and I will be adapting the pattern for this size yarn. You will also need thread for the eyes. I'm using yarn again for the eyes instead of embroidery thread. I found that embroidery thread, it just took too much to get the amount of eyes going that I needed. Um, you will need your H hook today. Um, pretty much everything you're gonna need is for the H hook. The pattern says J hook for the lining of the hat here, but this was with J hook and this is with H. The H definitely gave it a lot more curl going on. Um, you'll also need it for the eye hood and the eyes there. So you'll also need your sewing needle. Oop, oop, oop. Probably showing you there. That's how you're gonna attach everything and some scissors to end it all. Um, end all the yarn strings. Ooh. And your stitch marker for the eye. Um, you may need it for the eye hood. I was able to keep count, so you might need it. All right, so is there any other notes for you guys at this time about the hat? I think that was it. So um, the only note was that I am changing the eye the pattern for the eye so that it gets not as fat there, especially since I'm using worsted weight yarn instead of DK or double knit yarn, which is technically a smaller yarn. Um, so let me go ahead and turn this around so that you guys will be able to watch what I do. Um, I'll turn it back during the uh, stitching bit because it's it's a little wild there. So. And it, it's a really, my camera won't be able to handle it if it's phasing that way. So, Ooh, excuse me. All right, so let me go ahead and flip this around and show you guys how to make the hood and the eye. Let me get my setup going here. There we go. All right. So let's see, we need our main color and our H hook. We're gonna be making two of these hoods to get our eyeball, which is gonna be like that. Um, the hardest part I found about making the eye was making the pupil the same size on all of them. Um, <laughs> all three of my eyes do not match at this point, so let's see how the fourth one turns out. All right, so move it down a bit without it falling over. Yeah. So to begin with, we're starting with our H hook and our main color, and we're doing our magic ring again, which means we do the fish shape with the tail. And we need to do a total of eight half double crochets into the ring. So we're going to do a chain two up just to get the height. We're going to ignore it later. And we're going to do eight half doubles here. So that's one. It's a little wonky today. I haven't been doing this stitch in a while, so I'm a little rusty on it. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six, seven, and eight. 
All right. So now we got eight. And we're going to cinch up like our little purse here and cinch up our center of the ring. And we are now going to be doing 16 stitches. So it's two half double crochets in each stitch around. All right, so we've got not the chain one. We're going into this one. And we're gonna do 16 total. So it's one, two in the same spot. And then, whoop. where's that stitch at? Okay, there it is. Sometimes the stitches come on the inside here when they cup around and it's a little hard to see. So let's get back to it. Ah, there we go. Three, four, and five, six, uh, and we have seven, eight, Oh yeah, and this is just the, from the closing of the circle. Remember, I tuck my ends in as I go. So, you can leave that out if you want to. 13, 14, 15, 16. All right, not too worried about any of that. All right, so we now have 16. The next one here is we're going to do a total of we're working with fives, so we need 20 stitches. To do this, we're going to be doing three half double crochets first, and then we're going to do two. And just for my sanity, I will be using a stitch marker this time. So we're going to do three half doubles. One, I'm going to stick my stitch marker there. Two, three, and then we're going to do two half double crochets. So it's going to be four and five here. So that's four and five. All right, we're going to do that again. So six is a single, six. Seven, eight, and then nine and ten are in the same stitch. Nine and ten. All right, so that's ten. We're going to do it again. So, eleven is a single, twelve is a single, thirteen is a single. And then we have, whoop, 13 is a single, 14, 15, and then the same, 14 and 15. And then we have, ooh, 16, 17, 18 and I think I missed a stitch down below so we're gonna fake it 19 and 20 ish <laughs> all right so I'm officially faking it I don't want to go back and make you guys redo this again but it looks like I did miss a stitch down here in the bottom and that's why there's a big old hole but you know what magic of crochet it's gonna disappear and this next part doesn't matter much because even though we have this here, we're going to go back and forth now to get the shape here. As you can see, it doesn't actually follow all the way around. So we're going to go back and forth here. Oh, and I lost most of my yarn there. Okay. So now we're going to chain two, turn our work, and we're going to work 17 
half double crochet stitches across. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, So that, yeah, okay, so that's 17, and now we have this beginning of a cup shape here. So we're going to do another round or row just like that. So we're going to chain two up, and we're going to do 17 stitches across back to our beginning here. So we want to make sure we go in that first one after our chain stitch. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, oops, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 puts me here. All right, so that's our second row, and our cup shape is really starting to come out now. But to be a true monster eye, we're going to do one more row of this. So we're going to chain two up, one, two, turn our work and do another 17 going around here. Another row of 17. And this is all half double crochet. Two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Got the wrong part there. <laughs> Overreached. All right, so twelve. 13, 14, 15, 15, 16, and our last one is 17. All right, so now this was our last row. So what we're gonna do, so since we ended on a row here, we're just gonna do our chain stitch, pull through one. Now you can give yourself a bit of a tail for sewing. So when you cut, cut to where it's a pretty lengthy tail here. So you can use it for sewing the eyeball on and sewing it to the hat itself. So after you chain one, you're gonna pull the string through, tighten it up, and that is the cup for the eye. Now, I don't like this texture. So what I've done is I've flipped my eye cups inside out. And I like the texture on the outside now much better. It's a little smoother, it's not as ridgy, but that's personal preference. You guys can do either side that you want. And there's my little eye cup for the next guy here. It really does make some really cute monster eyes here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get the yarn that I'm using for my eye. 
Now, as I said, this is a worsted weight yarn. So that means it's the same as this guy here. In the original pattern, it says that you need to have the, I guess, the diameter of the eye, the longest, the widest bit of the eye as 24 stitches around. But 24 stitches around is ridiculously huge. Okay, and you want these eyes to sit inside that pocket really comfortably to where they're not bulging out. Bulging eyes equal not so cute in my book. Um, and it also won't sew on as well as easy because it's not only does its uh, bigger eyeball stick out of the bottom here, but it just sticks further out and it causes the, the hood here to expand a lot more. So I only did it to where there was 18 stitches around and I changed my middle number here. So instead of following the pattern and doing eight single crochets in a circle, I did six. Six is my usual go-to number for crocheting in a round. Eight was a little difficult for me to keep justifying because personal aesthetics. So we have here's my, I'm doing a white yarn. You don't have to do white. You can do any color you wanted. I just like the way the white looks with this off white. It's a ran color. So, and it wasn't too bold. So to start, we're doing a magic ring again. I'm going to put this out of the side there so not too much of the yarn gets confused. So a magic ring again, fishtailing it, bringing it around, and we're going to do six single crochets. So we're going to chain one. It gets, it's a throwaway. And we're going to do six single crochets. One, two, three, four, whoop, five, and six. All right, so that's six. After six, I'm gonna pull this closed. Now what I'm gonna do is I am going to do two stitches in every stitch around so I get 12. I'm building up a circle here. So it's one, two, Next one is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, whoop, nine. E. Gotta fight the iron. All right. 9, 10, and then 11, it's a regular crochet, 11, and 12. Now, this eyeball that I'm about to show you guys is also a really good pattern for little toy balls. Like if you wanted to make some juggle balls or, you know, something around toy, this is the size of it, so it's kind of cute. It's going to be per almost exactly perfectly round after you stuff it. So if you guys want to use this for other things, you totally can. So that was 12. Now we're going to do 18. So we're doing sets of three. So it's going to be one, two, and then three. Three, four, and five. So it's two single crochets in the next stitch, the first stitch. So it's one, two, and then three and then four five four five and six then seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 
13, 14, and 15. And last set is here, 16, 17, and 18. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, it doesn't look like much, but after stuffing and everything, it's gonna work out just fine. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do six rows, or sorry, six rounds of 18. So I'm going to do my single crochet first, for my first one. I'm going to throw my stitch marker in there. And I'm just gonna go crazy until I can count nine, a total of nine rows from here in the beginning. So you can count your row, your rounds. So this is round one, round two, round three. You can definitely, you can definitely tell the different rounds apart because there's this little line indention. You're not gonna see it on your, what I call right side out side because it's just the stitches here. But on the inside, you can clearly see the spiral shape forming up. Okay, so I'm just gonna go around until counting on this side of the stitch, I get, I count nine rows. Oh, I just lost a needle. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go continue around here and just go. It's gonna take me a moment or two, so I might just pop it up and have the eyeball look at you randomly here. Ooh, little cyclops thing. Just so I can go a little faster and this video doesn't get too long. Cause I still gotta show you guys how to put it together. So yeah, sewing the pupil onto the eye. I have no tips or tricks for you. I have no secrets. It's, it takes a lot of practice to get it. And I gave up on sewing eyes long, long ago. I usually use the, uh, the snap-on safety eyes or buttons. You could probably use button eyes for this guy and it'd be cute. But yeah, so I, I gave up on actually sewing eyes because it's way difficult. But I couldn't figure out an alternative way for this eye. So I'll be sewing it on and attempting to match the size of that one there. No guarantees it's gonna match. It's probably gonna look a little wonky. I don't remember what I did yesterday when I was practicing this up. So I've done about two rows here of my six. Oof. As you can see, it's kind of definitely cupping, cupping around now. It's definitely getting a little bit wider from when I first started, which is what I wanted. I don't want it too wide though. And let's see, is that the last one? Yeah. So I am on one, two, three, four, five, six. So I've got three more to go. Oof. Come on, get in there. So yeah, these are all just single crochets. You want them as single crochets here so that this, you do, you will be using, that's what I forgot to say, guys. You will be using polyfill to stuff the eyes to give them their shape and their durability and squishability without them collapsing. So you'll, if you hadn't gotten your polyfill ready, go ahead and go grab that. Um, but yeah, so you want to use single crochet stitch on this shape so that the stuffing doesn't escape. Especially with multiple uses, multiple washes, beating it up, um, et cetera, et cetera. Let's see, that was seven. This is eight. Oh, come on, get in there. 
So you'll notice I'm trying to keep the tension right here really tight as I go. My pinky is the stopper. It feeds the yarn as it goes. Like the single crochet stitch is just pull through one, pull through two. Go in, pull through one, pull through two. And then make sure you get every stitch so you don't end up with big holes. Anyone that you get every stitch. Okay, and I know when my stitches ends because it kind of goes this way. As I said, it's a spiral, so I got one more there. I'm going to check my rounds, make sure that was definitely eight and not nine. So again, we have these. It's kind of obvious as you look at it that there's lump, lumpies and valleys. So we have. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, yeah, one more round. <sighs> Last 18 stitches here. And you're kind of noticing that it's going a little long here. And you're like, I thought we were making a ball. Why is it looking like an oblong oval? The oval part, it's going to look like an oval at first only because we don't have the back half to it yet. So once I finish this round, it will be the best time for me to start sewing on the eyeball or the a pupil of the eye. And that's just because the whole the opening is big and it's easier to work on the inside when it's empty. All right. So there we go. That was nine. So I'm going to make sure that I don't actually sink my uh, stitch, my yarn in, so I make sure that I have a big old loop. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my black yarn and thread it onto my needle that went flying away from me. Where'd it go? Ah, there it is. Ah, sorry, excuse me. Okay. So. We're going to thread our black yarn and when you do this you want to make sure that you work on the inside first. So let me move this up, let me stitch the stitch marker on here and then I can pull the loop actually closed without losing my stitch. It's still there, it's just now locked in like that. So, I'm going to flip my work inside out first. I'm going to decide which way is the top and which way is the bottom. And I'm going to do a knotless start here. To do a knotless start, I pick a spot. And, let's see, I think I want it to be up here. So, when I do this, I'm only working on the inside stitches. If I flip it on the outside, my needle is not coming through here. And that's a way to hide your ends when you're sewing in a crochet, is just to work my hook. Anyway, it's um to work on the inside loops of your stitches. You can hide all your threads and sewings and anything like that on the inside here and it won't show up on the outside and I'll show you. So there's my, that was my knotless start. I just wrap the yarn around one piece a couple few times and it makes it totally secure. All right, so when I flip it over, you don't see any of the black, okay? And that's because I only used the inside stitch loops. So now what I'm going to do is I'm able to put it through here and have a nice start point. All right. You want to make sure that you don't accidentally sew any of these stitches here or get your yarn, your white yarn stuck in there somehow. So 
The best way I found to do this was that I don't want to be that high up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in and go down one so that I can kind of match the eyeball I got going on. Come on, go. There it is. So it shouldn't show up. Yeah, I just erased all of that. And like I said, I'm trying to match this eye here. So the way I did it yesterday or the other day was that, not that, uh, I'm gonna erase that stitch again and come up through here. Yep, yeah, okay. If you do it right, you shouldn't be seeing any of the stitches that you just made by accident and you don't have to un, un uh, thread your needle here. So, all right, this is more like it. So what I did was that I went over my middle and tried to get the same round and I went back in and I came out to the side here and when I came out to the side I flipped my yarn over like that so when I pull it through the eye it's no longer in a straight line it's gonna come out to the side of it and when I did that I came went back into the exact same spot that I came out of after looping that yarn and when I did that I get this nice kind of well it's a smiley face look or winky eye but I'm gonna do that to this opposite side here so that I get a nice sharp pointy look to the, my eye here all right so up it goes I start from the bottom this time I'm going to the top I'm going in the exact same spots as I came out of before, I'm going to try to match the siding on it. Make sure that I have the yarn going on the outside of my needle so I can get that smiley winky face going on and that's too far. And there we go. And I go back into the exact same spot. And I now have an outline of my eye, which should match theoretically, kind of, pretty close. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this in with just some, I guess it's called a satin stitch. So I'm going to bring this back out at the bottom in the exact same spot as before. Make sure I don't put my old yarn or my white yarn in there. And I'm just going to go Kind of loop it up into here and travel across to the bottom kind of into the black there so that there's no white that's going to show up and I pull it through and I just repeat this until this whole area is filled in it should only take a few stitches if you're using the yarn that's why I changed from the embroidery thread because the yarn is going to come out thicker and have more coverage you want to make sure that you're following the outline so you're actually going shorter and shorter with each pass through theoretically this guy's already not cooperating for me but it's an eye and eyes and I don't get along so it's gonna be what it is it get weird So I got one more here. Again, I'm just kind of like pulling it down to the bottom, pulling it back up to the top, doing a bit of a, what I would call a satin stitch. All right, so this guy's got one more here. So I'm gonna pop it in and have it come out the bottom again. I'm gonna move my yarn around so that it kind of covers up and I'm gonna finish this other side. Yeah. So I'm going to bring it up and down all the way around. If you do this normally, where you could sew on eyes or embroidery stitches or something, go for your own methods. This is just how I do mine and why it's awful and doesn't really work. Part of it is because. Ah, it doesn't stay even for me. 
Let's see if I got it this time though. Make sure you don't get that guy. All right. Hey, go, go, go. All right. Should I have two more stitches? Maybe one more? Let's see how fat this guy gets on his coverage. Okay. So yeah, there we go. So now I'm just gonna come up to the top here, put it back in. Gonna squish and play with my yarn a bit, make sure it's all covering what I want it to cover. And bam. Woo, he's pretty close. All right, so now I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna do a regular knot here on the inside. Again, I'm not letting it go over to the front. I'm just doing a square knot. It doesn't matter if it's messy or not, it's a knot. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my scissors and cut my string. And I'm going to get my floof floof. And I'm gonna stuff my eye. You don't need a whole lot for the eyeball. This is probably, yeah, probably what I need. Maybe a little less than this. But you're gonna go ahead and stuff it. And when you stuff it is when you're gonna get your shape. And you've got one more round to do, so. And that's a decreasing round. I'll probably actually, yeah, it should be fine. All right, and so as you can see, it's now got a round shape. I can check to make sure that it's gonna, it's the right size by snugging it into the hood to make sure that it matches still. That I did the hood right and everything. And it looks like it's pretty close. So let me go ahead and finish this up and close it up so that it's no longer open because it is going to be a completed uh, ball. So let me get my hook out. Oh no, wait, that went flying to the floor. All right. So for the last row here, you're going to do a decrease stitch to get 12 stitches again. And that means that you're going to single crochet two stitches together and then go into the next one like a regular one. So loop, so groups of two. So you're going to go single crochet uh, to do it to where it does not show that you decreased. You only take one loop from the outside. So one, and in the next one, one loop from the outside, two. That becomes one stitch. Pull it through all three loops. And in the next stitch, it becomes two. So that's two stitches, okay? And as you're going around here, make sure you're just pushing the stuffing in. So that's two, and I'm going to go decrease for three. And then four is a regular. And decrease again for five. And then six is a regular. And decrease again for seven. And then eight. And then we have a decrease on nine. So grab one, pull through, grab one, pull through. And this is the ninth stitch. And then we have a regular one, which is 10. And then we have 11 as a decrease. And our last stitch at 12. All right, so once you've done 12 stitches, you've got a pretty closed hole. What I normally do is I'll do a slip stitch and then chain one. And I'm gonna give myself a bit of a tail here so I can sew closed this ball. So I'm gonna end it, I'm gonna thread it, Take the black thread off, put the red white thread on, and put the white thread on. Oh, this is smaller than the usual thread. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the outside loop of each of these last 12 stitches, and I'm just going to pull it closed kind of like our magic ring in the beginning, but instead of six stitches, we only have 12. And I do that because last swing sti six stitches tends to make it look a bit, well, for the not so safe for work version, it looks a bit nipply. 
So I do 12 just to keep that nice smooth shape. And you want to make sure you get all the stitches, all the outside loops. Once you got all the outside loops, you pull it closed. Voila. And you go around one more time in all the stitches here just to make sure that it's secure before you knot it. There we go. All right, so now I've gone all the way around. I am going to do a little bit of a square knot here. It doesn't matter where on the eyeball you're going in this case because it's gonna be hidden by the hood. So square knot it. After you square knotted it, I probably could put more stuffing in there, but that's okay. So after I've square knotted it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick the needle in and push it, poke it all the way through. Pull it tight, cut close to the eyeball here, and what you'll notice happens is that the end disappears and it comes to where it won't ever come out even through the back because it's all tangled up in there. All right, so now that we have this all done, I now have two eyeballs. They're pretty close. I'd say they're close enough. I could probably twist it. If it doesn't go match one way, try another way. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna sew. And it's your choice here whether or not you wanna sew up here or if you just wanna sew at the bottom. I chose just to sew at the bottom because I didn't want this nice, cute edge to disappear. And you can make the eyes pop out. <laughs> It was kind of fun for me. So <laughs> I decided just to attach the yarn to the bottom of the eyeball. It's not going anywhere. It gives it a little bit of a cuter, softer look, but it's a, again, personal preference. So let me get my needle on. Let's see, make sure I got my eyeball lined up how I want it to be lined up because once it's sewed in there, there's no changing it. Make sure it matches as best as I can here. Okay. All right, so, and I'm just gonna, to sew it, I'm just going to go with every stitch here. I'm gonna attach it to the eyeball. So this first stitch here, I'm gonna go just however I can. You don't wanna to go too far down because you want this to kind of disappear as you sew. So you want it to look, it's not necessarily seamless, but the seam, the end seams definitely become less prominent as long as you could stay close to it. This is how you sew our gummy pieces together when they're two different colors. You wanna just go with the main color and it becomes kind of just a seamless especially if you only get one loop and then you go in as close as you can and it just kind of goes kind of smooth there make sure my eyes look good you want to check your work every now and then to make sure it didn't twist on you or that you're squishing it not too hard. Goodness. All right. And there we go. And almost done. Make sure the hood still lines up where I want it to line up. The eye all still promenading out. There we go. And then my last bit here is the corner. I'm gonna make sure the corner covers as much and is as pointy as can be. And what I'm gonna do here is I am going to do a bit of a square knot. The square knot will disappear 
when we attach it. So I'm not too worried about where I place it at here. All right, um, bam, there's my square knot. And I now have my second eye attached to the hood. And now I have two eyes. And it's definitely looking monstrous, right? Yep, yep. It's a little wonky monster. There you go. All right, so, and that is how you do the eyes. Now for the part that gave me the biggest trouble ever. The attaching of the lining of the tentacles. So you'll need your H hook again. And you will need some stitch markers so that you can put the linings on without having them smooth around too much. That's the key part there because you need them to line up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this around this time because it's not really a follow along via this way. It'll be easier to see from the front. So let me go ahead and move this around to get to the front. Make sure you guys get super close up on those eyes. Ooh. Come on, switch. There we go. Okay. Whoop, sorry. So I'm gonna put you guys back this way. I'm gonna clear off my space here. So. I have my tentacle finished hat that is unlined and I am going to attach the liners using my stitch markers. And to do that, I want to make sure that for the front part of the hat, I have my seven wides liners and I'm going to line them up to where they're at the top of the tentacle. I'm going to stick my crochet stitch marker into the corners like so and into the corner after I line it up once more so the first row is with the first row that you did on the tentacle arm around the tentacles there we go now i'm also going to follow this down and make the tips of the tentacle forced together. I'm going to put my middle stitch with the middle stitch here. And I'm going to make them go like that. You can put some on the side. I've had a few where you get a little wonky and get off. So I'm putting it on the side keeps it in space or keeps it in place better. So I'm going to stick some in the side here. You can it's your choice on how many you want to do. I mean, if you have safety pins, you could do safety pins though, but this less pokey. So now I've got my tentacle all lined up here. And you're gonna need your main color once more. And one of the things that this pattern calls for is that going down along the front, remember the 10 spaces that you have here? Going along this side here that faces your face, you need to do a stitch and every stitch going down, okay? When you get to the end of the tentacles, you're doing two stitches in three. So you're doing a total of six at the end of the tentacle. And when you're coming back up onto the inside, the side that's away from your face, you need to do half the amount of stitches that you did in the first half. And that's how you get the curls. So the pattern says you do 50 stitches down the front here. That means that when you come up and come back the back way, you are doing 25. So you're doing decreasing stitches. Um, the pattern also says to do it in half double crochet. I did not like the way it looked in half double crochet. It looked really clunky. Whereas with the single crochet, it's not as, it looks a little cleaner to me. So. I think that was all the notes on that part. You just want to make sure that your tentacles line up. You don't want to go in too far, too long. Um, you can cut on each tentacle. After you're done, you can cut the string and go into the next one. 
or you can do a continuous loop around. Um, I did continuous loop around just because I don't like tucking in ends and it, would, it worked out fine. I just forgot that you're supposed to mirror the sides. So when you, sorry, I gotta adjust the lighting. So when you do this around, you have four that have the 50 in the front and you still have to have 50 in the front. So when you go around, you just can't go 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, because it ends up not actually working out. I did that here. Um, so you want to make sure that it's always 50 here, 50 here. Even on the back, there's, a, that, there's two on either side that split, and that's where the mirror is going to come in. Um, so I'm just going to show you guys how to attach it really quick. Um, well, it's not going to be quick. It's going to take a minute. This is what took the longest part for me. But I'm going to just show you how, how to attach it here on this one. And then I'll go on to how to attach the eyes in the back of the head here. So you will need your H hook. The H hook comes in to make the, the curls tighter. So this is a J hook with uh, not as tight of a tension pull through. This is the J hook where I started getting the tension going, but this is an H hook. Okay. So with the H hook, I got a significantly tighter curl going on and this is all a single crochet. So I'm going to continue to suggest using the H hook for this just to get the tighter, cuter curls. So you're going to start up at the top and you can start inside or outside. Um, but you want to make sure your hook goes through both the lining and the outside of your hat. So let me just get my, so you want your main color again. And I'm going to start off by doing a chain stitch on the stitch before the, the tentacle starts, a chain stitch with a single crochet in there and then I'm going to go in every single stitch down they're all half doubles okay so it's on average about two two uh, one and a half stitches per stitch the chain stitches tend to only get one stitch in them and the half doubles because we went back and forth remember so the half doubles will usually get two um, but the idea is that you get every you hit every single stitch on both the lining and the outside. So I'm going to go into my first one here. I'm going to move my clip off. It's in the way. So we have the one stitch there with the one stitch here. And I'm going to do a single crochet theoretically. And there we go. So yeah, and then I'm going to, it doesn't matter if you grab only one loop or two on these side stitches, just as long as you're grabbing them and you kind of are consistent. Um, and I ended up grabbing one, so I'm going to go one on the, all of these. And you just want to make sure that you're not bunching. You want to continuously make sure that this stays matched up so you don't get off on your counts. So you're matching you're matching and you go with a single crochet because on this side because it's facing the face you want to make sure that every stitch gets one single crochet in it and do, 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 do. this is going to take a really really long time um, you're going into bigger stitches because you used your J hook on this on the, the both the lining and the uh, stitch here so an H hook should go in theoretically a little quicker theoretically um, but the problem is that these stitches they're not like working on the tops of the stitches these are the sides of the stitches these are the the cast offs the not so easy to see clean parts of your stitch this is what you hide when you put on a border on a blanket or something 
So it's it's not easy to spot. It's not easy to see. It's difficult to get into sometimes, which is why it's going to take you a pretty long time to do this part. Um, I think it took me four days to do this. Yeah, something like that. It was very tedious. But here we go. I'm not quite halfway. I'm about a quarter of the way. Let me check and make sure that I still have it lined up. It's not overflowing. Yeah, we're good. A good uh, if it's you're finding that one side or one the layer between the lining and the outer tentacle. If you're finding that it's getting too long on one on one of them, it's because you've probably done too many stitches. So you can just kind of lighten up on the stitches that you do. Maybe not grab every single spot, um, and that will help a lot. All right. Tedious. There we go. E nope. Okay, there we go. Almost halfway. Yay! So yeah, this is this is the part that takes the longest. This is the part that makes these hats super expensive if you go on Etsy. I actually went to Etsy the other day just to see how much these hats were, how much people were selling them for. Oh. Guys, it's going to be cheaper for you to make it yourself. I mean, I said 60 and that's before adding the cost of yarn. They're selling them for $100 on Etsy. So if you want to make some bank this, you know, this summer before fall and everyone wants these hats. <laughs> make a hat. <laughs> All right. So I'm now halfway done here. I am not actually keeping count. Um, the count doesn't really matter so much on this side, just as long as you're hitting every stitch. And on the other side, you're going to hit every other stitch. If that makes sense. So let's see. Um, come on. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. I got these long locks here now. I won't lie, it's a really comfortable pillow thing. Just lean up against the wall, your head's warm, you shade your eyes, got a nice little pillow in the back, and you're set. It works really well like that. Alright, so check, yep, we're good. Almost done with this spot here, about three quarters of the way. I should ask my husband how many quarters is three quarters. <laughs> He's not watching anymore, it's okay. No one's watching. All right, I know this is, this is the hard part about the hat. This is the longest part of the video. I apologize. You can fast forward. It's probably another five minutes or so of me doing this. So if you want to fast forward, it's okay. Five minutes. You'll be good. Ugh. I turn it around the video so you don't have to watch me struggle here. It's the only reason why I turned it around because there is a lot of struggling going on. I don't want you guys to see me struggling. super fast. All right, here we go. Almost done, almost done, almost done. We're still matching? Yep, still matching. Uh, get in there. Come on. Ooh. Ah, fine, you can go there. It's just adding a border to the blanket. That's all this part is. It's just annoying to add borders. Adding borders takes so long. All right, so I'm at the, the tip of my tentacle now. So I'm gonna do 
two, two, and two for a total of six stitches here in the top. So this is going to be one, two, and then we got a three, four. I can remove the next stitch marker. And then the last one is going to be a five, six. Five and six. So I've got some ends here. I'm just going to tuck them between my layers here. Cheater method to get rid of my ends. I don't have to do them later. It's not going to escape. So I'm just going to tuck those guys in there. So this continue sewing this up and they're going to be gone. So now that I've finished this one side, I am now doing this side. And this side here is going to be where I am decreasing. So I'm going to do my decreasing single crochet. I'm going to go into a stitch, grab the next row, or both of the color stitches there. I'm going to pull it through one. I'm going to go into the next stitch and get both somehow. I'm going to pull it through. Now I have it to where it's a decreasing stitch and I pull through all three loops. And I do that with every single stitch on this side. I just grab and every stitch is a decreasing stitch. And when I do this, it causes, not only do I have half the number of stitches this time, but it's gonna cause the curl. And you'll start seeing it curl really quick. So let me, let me get this going to where you guys can see these curls. Oh, long stitch. Got to do decreasing stitches on this second side. Decreasing is how you get the curls. And you're still getting in every stitch, you're just decreasing them. So two stitches are put together. You're not skipping any stitches. Because skipping causes holes and holes are bad. Unless you want this hat to stash stuff, which I don't recommend. And make sure it still lines up. It's not gravely mistaken if it doesn't though. You want to make sure you're getting both colors on your decreases. And there we go. And then decreasing stitch, decreasing stitch. And as you can see, it's definitely starting to curl up on me. This is not me shaping it. Well, that was. But it's automatically curling up. Let's give it a nice, cute little curl. Like I said, I'm not skipping any stitches. These are all, every stitch is being worked. It's just being stitched together. <sighs> this side also works up faster because you're not doing technically as many stitches. So let's see. Do, 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 do. Get in there, there we go. And do, 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 do. So yeah, if you guys want to skip me again, fast forward. It'll probably be another five minutes of me doing this and do 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 doing. It's uh, my little victory thing. But I am halfway now. And as you can see, it's really starting to curl in. It, when I curl it more, it tends to keep that shape. So, move this stitch marker so I don't need it anymore. And we're gonna get to the end. Working every stitch, doing it as clean as I can. Again, working the, the textured yarn like this, it was a little rougher getting these ends on because sometimes you grabbed the thread without grabbing the main part of it, and thus it was not the greatest stitch so we got a little holy let's see do, 
stitch, stitch, stitch. You want to make sure you're not grabbing two stitches and accidentally doing a double stitch there. You make sure you're grabbing two different stitches each time as you go up. Again, you see the curl that it's starting to get. It's getting it all on its own. Like I've got that much left. few stitches here last two stitches so then I got my last two stitches here I've got one more in the corner here and I'm just going to go up and put it in there like normal okay get that out I'm going to go into the next stitches. Oh. I think I might have ended it too soon. Eh, oh well. It matches, so it's fine. All right. Do, do, do. I'm going to just single across into this spot. I'm going to end it now, so I'm going to do a slip stitch into the next stitch, pull it through, chain stitch. And cut myself since I'm changing. I'm just gonna end it. I am gonna give myself a little bit of tail so it's easier to sew in later. Knot it, and then I will go on to continue doing the rest of this. But this is the tentacle, and with its little twirl twisty twirls there, it still does it pretty good here. It's a different type of yarn. It's fine. So yeah, you're gonna automatically get these twists happening as you continue around. All right, so how to sew on the back of the head and the eyes. So again, you want your main color and your, uh, and your uh, needle. And sometimes your eyes, you might have given yourself a tail, and that's cool. With the back of the head, you may or may not have given yourself a tail, I didn't. So I've got my back of the head here. I'm going to fluff it first. So I'm going to get my polyfill. I don't want a lot of fluff in here. I'm going to just kind of half stuff it. So with the polyfill, sometimes you have to play with it and pull it apart. It's a little lumpy. You don't want it too lumpy. Um, if you pull it apart, you get it less lumpy and it will stick together better. So I'm gonna stuff this into here. And it's given myself a little bit of a shape, but it's not too stiff. Um, if you don't want the chance of the stuffing coming out of the holes, you can line it with some fabric first. Um, I don't have any fabric to line it with, so we're just gonna risk the holes. Um, but usually with the, the fiber fill, unless you're actively picking it out, it's not going to come out. Um, you, and it's easier to just stuff it back in. So let me just give myself a little bit less up here at the top so that it kind of like slumps down like that. So, all right. And then what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take my main color, I'm gonna thread it onto, and I'm going to put it Start off with that that uh, knotless start again. So I'm going to stick it into the back of the hat here. I'm just going to wrap it a few times so that I can get that chainless or that knotless start. It's okay if it's a, uh, with a knotless start because you're going to knot it at the end anyway, and it's going to get sewn over. So it's not going like it's going to go anywhere. All right, and then what I'm going to do 
So I'm going to try to line this up to where the back of the head lines up to where it's kind of even with the middle of the four in the back here. It's a little difficult. You kind of want to like make the back a little bigger so you gotta scroll this up a bit. And it's gonna automatically kind of give itself the right shape you want. So I'm gonna turn this a bit more. Got the middle of my hat here. Since I've got this going, it's already there. All I have to do is pick where on the hat I want to attach it. I'm gonna go a little higher here. It's almost to the middle. That's a little back from the middle. And I'm just going to thread it through and pull it and it's gonna flop just right there onto there. Now what I'm gonna do is I can use some stitch markers to hold it in place or I can just kind of just go sewing. You want to sew each of these stitches here to the stitches on the hat here. So let's see. Sometimes you might wanna like give your hat the shape of a head. Um, if you have a mannequin, that'll work too. But just try to keep your stitches as evenly apart as possible. It's going to help with attaching it, make sure it's straight on. Um, let's see, I want to make sure it doesn't go too wonky on me. So I will stick a stitch marker to where it's on the opposite side here. There we go. And now I'm just going to go sew in, circle, sew in a circle here and attach it to the hat. Um, you don't need to go too far down. It's going to be about halfway down the hat anyway. And so, yeah, you're just going to take the loop, sew it in. And you're going to just do that, repeat that around. Just like with the hood of the eye, you don't want to go too far down. You want to, the stitches to get pretty close to where it would land. There's no need to go like super far away. And it works best if you can get in between those stitches, like lifting up the stitches themselves um, to make sure it, uh, it's not actually going all the way through the hat. So you're gonna sew it and you're going to sew it. And it's gonna take a couple minutes, especially if it's biting you. Stop biting me. And it starts biting me again. So yeah. Um, and you're just kind of doing a whip stitch on this. That's the stitch you're using to sew it together. It's called the whip stitch. Kind of whip it together. Make it two pieces together. Whip it, whip it. You want to make sure your hat doesn't scrunch up on you. As you're doing this, because if it scrunches up on you, then you're going to have a weird crease. The idea is not to have that crease. It's okay if the back of the hat or the head part here looks a little off center or wonky. Um, you can just move the stuffing around and it's going to give you the octopus head shape. Um, pretty much no matter what you do. Because that's... An octopus it has no bones. All right, so there's a few more stitches here. Make sure you're not doing too many stitches. Like you're not doing, again, a funky crease in the hat where you pinch it across and you're like, oh, no. Uh, make sure you're not doing that. Make sure you're just getting stitches that line up to where you are currently. Alright, time to get rid of that because that didn't actually work. It is a fight. Um, honestly, if I had a head mannequin, I'd be using that just so that I can get this in the right shape, the right spot. But who's, who carries around a head mannequin? And, and husband doesn't want me stabbing his head, so a real mannequin or a real, a real man won't work. <laughs> mannequin man. So let's see, all right, and then this stitch here. Again, it doesn't matter how your stitches look. The most important part is, is that you got every stitch attached here. So you don't have any major 
the large holes. So, uh, detached. It's pretty center still. So now that I've gone all the way around, I'm going to just do a square stitch here in my next spot. And then another square square stitch or square knot. Cinch it up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just kind of going to weave in a bit of an end here however I can just to make the end disappear so it doesn't come undone. So I did that. I'm going to pull it tight and cut it and voila the back is now attached. And as I said I'll, I'll probably play with the fluff a bit make sure it's got the right shape but it's there. So now that I've got the back of the hat, head on, I can add on the eyes. And you would just do the same thing with the eyes um, as you did with the back of the head. You're going to pick a spot, make sure that they're pretty even. You can make them the eyes go sideways on it. They can go forward. Kind of looks like those uh, nom nom, what was it? Yup, yup, guys. Um, you can make it go back more. It's really depending on how you want to line it up. Once you got it figured out, you're going to start just sewing on there just like you did with this one here. And then after you've done added the eyes, go through, make sure there's no other ends that you need to tuck in. And your hat is going to be done. As you can see, this guy here who I've been wearing a while, he looks like a cute little octopus. And that is what you guys can make. Woo. So, all right. I think this video is long enough now. I think you guys understand how to put things together. If not, leave some questions in the comments. I'll get back to them. If you guys actually finished a hat or started the hat, throw the, those pictures in the comments or on my page. I'll see them. Um, so, yeah. And that is basically how you make this octopus hat. That everybody wanted. I hope that the videos helped if you're going to do this on your own. I hope it was a little entertaining to those of you who watched. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope these didn't get too too long or make you like oh my gosh I'm never doing crochet it takes forever because it does sometimes projects are long. Um, keep an eye out for other posts on my page. I'm going to have a a uh, poll soon about whether or not you guys want to learn another project. I'm thinking a loofah or a scrubby since everybody's home. Hawaii just extended to May 31st. So if you're still getting a little stir crazy, got some solutions for you. All right. So I guess that is all I have for you guys. Again, any questions, let me know. And I hope you guys enjoyed. Good luck. Bye. Stay safe. Mm. Oh, I forgot how to end it.